Thank you, Kathleen. So Sajay Hatat is a bus operator based in um, Kathmandu. We've been around for a long time. If you see this picture, this is a picture of old Kathmandu back in 1960. You know, we started operations, we were established in 62, started operations in 63. So almost 60 years we've been around. However, um, in the middle, we stopped operations because of problems with management, a um, lot of political interference and so on. So we, um, we stopped operations for about 12 years or so, and then revived um, the bus company, bus cooperative, we'd say, um, about seven, eight years ago. And this is a picture when we you know, got 16 new buses. We sold a piece of land we had, we, we brought the company down. Um, you know, it was the government had already taken it to, you know, trying to get rid of it. We went to court, fought, fought a court battle. So after a long process, long process, we came back. And we, when we came back into operations, we were quite clear on what we wanted to do. Um, we wanted to raise the bar on public transport. And um, there we, need, we wanted to focus on three things. One, the infrastructure, the buses um, need to be good quality buses. So we invested in 16 new large Euro 3 um, standard buses, which means that you know, in, Nepal, in Nepal at Kathmandu at that time, there were only small public transport operators operating small vehicles. Um, often it was you know, of poor quality, old vehicles. And Euro 1 was the norm at that time. The government required only Euro 1. So we're the first time we wanted to go to Euro 3 vehicles. So we wanted to be environment friendly right from the beginning. And that's where we started with the new buses. And of course, with the new kind of services, for example, a ticketing system, a system where you know people are required to stand in line to get in. And, um, um, and also that we had, um, People who wanted to get in, from, you know, who had to get in from one door, come out of the other door, and so on. So some kind of system um, we wanted to introduce there in terms of services. Um, the services also we introduced night services in the in the city. Went to new destinations such as airport. We didn't have buses going to the airport before then, or not inside the airport. We started those services, and also we feel that you know public transport should be accessible to all. So disabled friendly buses were something that we wanted to go for it go for. These are, of course, very high floor buses. So the ramp is very steep. So we went for um, semi low floor buses. Um, we don't have too many of these, but slowly we're going for that. And of course, the next step would be better. Um, but beyond before that, we needed investment. Um, so we wanted to um, bring in the local governments. So this is a picture of Kathmandu uh, mayor investing in Sajayata, investing in shares in Sajayata. So now we have Kathmandu, Lalitpur, um, several other cities in the valley who have invested shares in Sajayata along with government. So the third improvement we wanted, the first I just said was the infrastructure or the hardware side of things. The second was the software side of things and the service. The third is the institutional aspect. We have seen that with just government operating public transport, that was not successful. We just up the private sector operating public transport in Kathmandu as it is now, um, that also has a lot of problems. So a hybrid model where we are a cooperative with governments and local governments as members, we thought that that could be a more um, you know, appropriate model. So that's where we um, in, engaged with the Kathmandu city. So Kathmandu and Naritpur cities are both members in this. We realized that it's, you know, air pollution is a major problem in Kathmandu. You will, this is the Kathmandu Valley, Kathmandu Valley in case you haven't seen it. Um, you can see that we, it's, we are blessed by beautiful nature, the mountains right there. But the top of the picture is beautiful nature. The bottom of the picture is what we created out of it. So it's a lot of pollution. It's one of the most polluted cities in the world often. Um, and we know that a lot of it is transport driven. This is um, the city during um, what is called Lakshmi Puja or Diwali, when all, the, all of the houses have their lights on. Till about two years ago or so, the government used to say two, three years ago, you know, don't put on the lights, we don't have enough electricity. Now the government says, put on all your lights, enjoy the festivals, we have a lot of electricity. In fact, right now, when our neighboring countries, India, China is suffering from energy prices, electricity prices, we have surplus energy in our grid. In fact, quite a bit of energy is actually um, going to the neighboring, neighboring state of Bihar in India right now. So the, the electricity supply is getting better as well. So what we see as this as an opportunity, increasing electricity supply. Um, however, we don't have any petroleum. So the petroleum, um, petrol, diesel, all of it, we have to import. And which means that um, that 
is the cause of the trade deficit, which is very high. The major cause is petroleum. And people realize that, so there's a need to reduce that. There's also high demand for vehicles as a, um, you know, people, the income increases about 14% per year, number of vehicles increasing, which is very high. Um, pollution, as I said earlier, is a major problem. But now, increasingly, we, we see um, favorable policies from the government. For example, this year, the government decided to um, reduce um, custom duty on electric vehicles and so on. And when we talk to the local governments in particular and the government, there's an interest to invest in electric vehicles. So this is um, the current scenario, scenario regarding electric mobility and how we function. So what we did was then we met with, um, this is about four or five years ago, we started meeting with manufacturers, operators in India. We went to India, we went to China. Um, we did a pre-feasibility um, for EPAS in partnership with GGGI, um, which is based in Korea, but also they're active in Nepal. So we're a partner there. Um, and finally, most recently, we have ordered 40 electric buses from CSTC. We went through a very um, you know, transparent process of procurement following all government rules. And um, this is a, it's a Chinese company. We've also, you know, started the process for getting some sightseeing buses in that we go around the old city of um, Lalitpur. Kind of what um, Anton was saying earlier, except he uses more delivery vehicles. Um, we're also establishing the, a charging station there in our own depot to charge those 40 buses plus those um, four sightseeing buses that we're going to get. Um, and we are, in, you know, continuing to mobilize investments from central and local government. Um, also, we have a partnership with Kathmandu University to do some research on this, and of course, a solutions project. We are um, working with various partners. Now, these are just some pictures of, you know, what I said earlier. This is, you know, about four or five years ago. We talked to manufacturers from China. This is in Pune. We took a, you know, group to Pune together with GGGI. Um, to look at the system operating system there. This is the, the pre-feasibility study I talked about earlier. Um, this is just some analysis when we did where GGI helped us. Um, this is you know, four years ago, but basically showing how, of course, electric buses are more expensive, but if you factor in the cost of economic cost, social cost, environmental cost, it, um, then it's about equal. So, and that cost, I think, is cost to the society, and therefore there is, um, a reason for government to subsidize electric buses in particular. Um, so this is the reason we, we, we use this data to do a lot of advocacy, um, talk to a lot of government in, in, you know, officials and so on. And finally, two years ago, the government decided to invest um, 3 billion rupees in Sajaya that particularly for electric buses. And with that, we have managed to um, get some buses um, or at least started to get some buses. This was the prime minister. We had invited him to launch electric buses. Unfortunately, these buses aren't on the road. So it's not always, um, the road is not always as smooth as it sounds. So there's, there's, there were some difficulties in operating these buses, um, but we hope that these new buses that we're gonna get um, through an international competitive bidding process, as I said earlier, um, there were nine bids that, that, had, uh, that we received from various companies. Um, and then we got, a, we feel that we, we managed to get these buses at a very competitive price um, for the bus, 40 buses plus 20 chargers, about $3.7 million, um, which is around, you know, 90, 93 and a half, um, $93.5,000 per bus and charger, plus a five-year maintenance um, system with all spare parts included, would be about 2800 per bus per year. So that the company will provide. So that's this, you know, um, the agreement that we've done with the company and the, the, the picture you see is the kind of bus that we hope to get be getting in early 2022. Um, now, this is where Solutions Plus, of course, can help us in, you know, like we said, we, we, we are going to invest in the, in the electric um, buses as well as the other required infrastructure, for example, charging infrastructure, as well as, you know, e-ticketing and so on. But um, for us to, you know, manage these buses, select these buses, and um, and also, you know, manage the operating systems and also the integration, as Oliver said earlier, the vehicles, operations, integration, all of that is important. Um, so it's good to network with partners, learn from the experiences of other cities, as Kathmandu is one of 10, and, you know, cities. And also, we wanted to look at not just 
you know, can, you know, buying buses, but there are a lot of buses or vehicles lying around here. Some are old, um, some because they're 20 years old, they can no longer be operated as the government doesn't allow um, buses more than 20 years on the streets. But if they're fairly good quality buses, can we convert them to diesel? I'm sorry, diesel buses to electric. So the retrofitting aspects um, is something that we'd like to do in terms of both um, design, develop, disseminate, all of it. We hope to do with um, Solutions Plus and other partners here in Nepal. Um, but it's not the Sazayatat that the Solutions Plus is, is supporting. Um, we want to look at the whole e-mobility eco ecosystem in Nepal. Therefore, we're supporting a um, few EV entrepreneurs in redesign in the Safa temples, which are the electric three-wheelers that have been around Kathmandu for more than 25 years now. But, you know, maybe they could be redesigned and become more efficient um, or used for different purposes. So trying to promote um, e-mobility system as a whole and part of this is building local capacity that we hope to work with um, local entrepreneurs as well as others to build capacity. And in that context, I'd also like to um, put in a little advertisement for the training, Nepal specific training or Kathmandu specific training that's gonna happen um, next week. Um, um, here, in, of course, most of it will, will be online, but we also hope to get together a few people and visit an electric um, vehicle charging station or, or factory. So this is just some preliminary designs. These are, you know, you know, last, because last year the, and, and year before last, we've, we've all gone through COVID um, and we haven't been able to do too much work on this, but these are just some preliminary designs and there'll, there'll be a lot of changes in this as we go along. But Safa Tempo is that, you know, the three wheeler that we see there. It's, it's done great service to this, this um, city, but we hope that we could also, you know, look at other multiple uses for that um, Safa Tempo, particularly during COVID, you know, it suffered a lot. A lot of them are not functional right now um, because, you know, you, in this, you are cramped in the back and a lot of people are not very interested in sitting very close to next to each other right now. Um, so overall, we just wanted to say that, you know, we hope that with, in the coming year, we will um, operate our, we hope to get our 40 buses, like I said, early next year. Um, our four sightseeing buses in Lalitpur, these will start operating the charging state, our charging station in Pulchok will start coming to operation. Then we, we're going to start, we've already started the process in a way uh, to do some research onto new additional large buses for Kathmandu Valley. Um, the freeze, so also looking at outside Kathmandu Valley, what we can do, conversion of diesel bus to electric, like I said, and overall building a new EV ecosystem in Kathmandu Valley. This is what we want to do. And our overall objective is that from now on, we're not going to buy any more diesel buses. Diesel buses history for us. Hopefully by 2025, 100% of our fleet will be electric. Thank you.